Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn and this is the Oculus Go. This is an unboxing video to show you what's in the box. With this virtual reality headset from Oculus that represents a standalone virtual reality experience that doesn't require a PC like the Oculus Rift or HTC Vive. So it basically allows for wire-free virtual reality gaming, which is exactly what you want. Or at least if you want a comfortable and accessible bit of VR and you've never used virtual reality before. This device is available May 1st and costs £199, $199 or €219. Euros. And it will be rolling out across the world with access to buy it from a variety of different stores. Now Oculus says they've been working hard on this device to ensure you get a superb experience that's wire-free and comfortable. Um, I'll go into a bit more detail on what that means in a bit. But what it does mean is that you get a accessible VR experience that doesn't require a gaming PC and doesn't require a phone. You might have seen other devices such as Google Daydream, Google Cardboard and Samsung Gear VR which require you to insert a compatible phone but this device works on on its own completely alone just requires a phone for setup but you don't need a particular phone you can use ios or android devices to do that just install the oculus go app and hook it up to your wi-fi and you're away and then you don't even need the app after that unless you want to do specific things like view photos on your camera on. so what that means is that basically anybody can use this and It'll be great for your family and friends and as a present or just for yourself as a nice treat. You'll notice on the box there it says there are a thousand plus games. That's because the Oculus Go is compatible with Samsung Gear VR apps, experiences and games. Which means on launch you get a thousand different experiences to play around with. And there's also the promise of a hundred apps that have been optimized, updated, or are brand new specifically for the Oculus Go. So there's plenty of goodness there. You'll see the design is pretty subtle, very gray and understated. There's no cables, but there's no garish colors here either. You can see the Android power inside. You notice on the side there, there is a micro USB input and a headphone jack, 3.5mm, as well as a microphone at the top, you can see by my thumb. On top of it sits the power controls and the volume controls, so it's all really simple. Now a highlight here of the Oculus Go is that there are, there's no headphones built into it, and it doesn't require headphones, so you don't need to buy your own separate ones, because it uses a sound speaker system which is built into the front of the device and pushes out audio along the head straps. You can see it also comes with a pretty tiny remote control, which is a similar design to the one with the Samsung Gear VR, which is how they allow cross compatibility with the apps on that. This is AA battery powered as well, so you need some AA batteries, but it does come with them, which is a nice change. Now going back to the sound, as I was saying, the spatial sound is pushed out of the front of the headset through the head straps and straight into your ears. And it's actually pretty impressive. You get a nice bit of surround sound from it, obviously, it's a virtual surround sound experience, it's not a proper surround sound. But we found that it was actually quite good in games and Oculus Rooms and other experiences. You can hear where a sound is coming from and get a good sort of immersive experience from it. It also means that you don't get tangled up in headphone wires, which is another joy. So it really is truly wireless experience and that's excellent for VR. Because one of the frustrations of using something like the Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive is constantly getting knotted up in cables. Now of course this Oculus Go comes with three degrees of freedom movement tracking which basically means it only tracks the movement of your head so looking around and tilting your head up and down and such and also the movement of the controller so there are games where you can tilt the controller around and use that as the movement but you can't stand up and walk through the virtual world or explore you can't, it won't track your hand movement in the same way the Oculus 
Rift or HTC Vive would, so you can't interact with things within the virtual world. Basically what this means is, is the control is pinned to your side constantly and you have to use it like a magic wand or a laser pen pointing at what you want to do and then clicking to um, interact with those items in the virtual world. In the box you can see as I said there's a AA battery and a lanyard that you get for the controller so you don't throw it away. You'll also note the micro USB cable there is for both for charging and connects to your computer to uh, put photos and videos on there if you want to and also to edit the contents of the device. You will note there there's also a glasses spacer system which basically means if you're a glasses wearer you can put that in the face underneath the face mask which you'll see in a minute I'll show you how to do that. That allows for a little bit more room to account for these your glasses when you're playing which makes it a bit more comfortable. Actually the design of this headset I mean is constantly comfortable when you have those three adjustable head straps that obviously use velcro but they've Oculus say they've researched a lot of research into the comfort and the breathability of these fabrics to get the right sort of mix so that you can wear this for a long time and game with without sweating and getting really uncomfortable. Actually you found it is pretty good and it is quite comfortable in that way. You do still have a box strapped to the front of your face so it does get uncomfortable after a while. Now the built-in batteries for this device offer around two hours of playtime or two and a half hours of video content. You can watch Netflix and have access to a variety of other video apps including Hulu and other platforms and publishers are publishing content on there. There's BBC, Sky, VR experiences that you can enjoy. So that basically means you've got a lot of access to different things. Obviously it's an Oculus product, which is a Facebook product. So that means you can access Facebook 360 content. You can look at your photos on Facebook. You can look at photos from your phone. You can put photos and videos directly on the device. There's a lot of access to be able to look at different types of media, um, wherever you might choose to look at it from and then import it into the device and look at, look at it on a big screen and be immersed in it. And it's quite impressive. Did find that some of the VR video content was kind of blocky, especially when you're streaming it. Which is surprising, these lenses and the display offer a 2560 by 1440 resolution. It also offers uh, 538 pixels per inch and it's capable of a 72 hertz refresh rate maximum or 60 hertz depending on the apps that you're playing and the experiences you're involved in. Oculus say they've worked to reduce motion blur and other issues with the design of this headset to make sure it's as comfortable as possible. Honestly did find it a bit of a struggle. It's very hard to be objective with this sort of thing because obviously coming from high-end devices I've tested the HTC Vive Pro. I regularly use the HTC Vive and to go from what is a high-end VR experience to something like this is quite a change. Um, it's very much a mobile experience. You obviously, for the games, you get a mobile look and feel to them, um, which means the graphics aren't amazing. The experience itself, however, as you can see here, is not too bad. So this is some video captured from inside the device that shows you the sort of things you can do. You'll have, this is the main area of the home sort of screen. You have a navigation down the bottom which allows you to switch between the store and the library, use a web browser, look through the gallery and browse images and content. You can connect with your friends, um, talk to them, start uh, parties and you can do stuff like go live and record video and take photos and share photos on Facebook. So there's a variety of different things here and the interface is really well designed. That is a highlight of this device as it's basically a really user-friendly easy to access bit of VR software and hardware which basically means that you could give it to anybody and they'll be able to dive into VR and have a bit of fun. Um, where, uh, other points of interest include a voice system which allows you to say hey oculus and then do various commands so hey oculus launch netflix hey oculus launch facebook hey oculus cancel the various things there's loads of different commands that are worth playing around actually the voice recognition isn't too bad you can see you can go to the store you can search through and find content that you're interested in but it also allows you to highlight areas of things that you'd be interested in and then it will show you those anyway in the store there's a lot of different free apps to try out there's lots of different video content and experiences and 
you know, I wasn't blown away by some of them, but obviously you get what you pay for as well. There are some games that are better than others. Netflix is particularly interesting. Unfortunately, I can't show you because it stops recording, but that takes you into a virtual lounge where you can then sit and watch your favourite shows and the lights dim is pretty cool. So there we have it. That's the Oculus Go. This is an unboxing and initial review.